Welcome to uh, Liberty Insider. This is a program designed to bring you up to date on religious liberty develops, developments around the world, not just in the United States, and to discuss them in a way that can tell you the underlying dynamic behind some of these developments. My name is Lincoln Steed, editor of Liberty Magazine, and my guest on the program is, uh, uh, I was going to call you professor, but let's just call you elder, pastor. Pastor will help. <laughs> yes. Kingsley uh, Palmer, a religious liberty uh, leader for the Seventh Adventist Church. Uh, and uh, a, a good raconteur, to throw in a little French. Um, but let's not go to France, let's go to India. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you've had an interesting history in England and uh, living for many, many years in mm -hmm. the US, but for uh, some time you were based in India. Yeah, we, we you taught my, in India. Yeah, we taught um, in the 90s in India at what is now known as Spicer University, it was Spicer College at the time. Yeah. And that came about because we were doing graduate studies in England and we had a three month project, that's my wife and I, and uh, we wanted to do it overseas in a place where we could get an experience, another perception. And I'm sure you got an experience. Uh, oh, yes. I, it changed my life when I visited India as, first as a young person. Mm -hmm. uh, there's really no country like it. I mean, every country is unique in its mm -hmm. own way, but India is just overwhelming to every sense. It is. And uh, the sense that I'll start with is India is the country of many gods. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the different Hindu deities, uh, a, a myriad, the, uh, and, and the whole uh, theology and history that lies behind that. And of course, there's, there's many uh, Muslims in India. Mm -hmm. uh, there are just subtext of, of all religious activity. And, and you can make a pretty good argument that, that, that India was, was a, a focus of human development in the world, not just, mm -hmm. all, what is it, Old Duvi, George, or Gorge, or whatever in, in mm -hmm. Kenya, mm -hmm. I think it was with uh, Louis Leakey, uh, but uh, the, the history of in India goes way, way back. In fact, some uh, people that I think are pursuing a rather dead-end uh, philosophical religious endeavor try to say that Jesus was trained in, in India in the hidden years and brought Indian philosophy. That's an interesting <laughs> one. <laughs> uh, uh -huh. But uh, uh, I'm sure it was overwhelming to you when you went to India from it, every level, but on the religious level. What, mm -hmm. How did you relate to that as someone from a Christian background going well, to India? Again, we had an Indian community in England before I left. So we had some kind of connection to that community. Mm -hmm. And when we went there, I mean, what we saw was just absolutely eye-opening um, in terms of being there and seeing the, the diversity of belief systems that were in place and how they governed how people lived separately. And each group was passionately connected to and defend and and and, uh, and in defense of their particular religious persuasion so many thousands and hundreds of gods in the in the um, in the pantheon of Hinduism and then you had other other um, religions and of course Islam or yeah. the, the Muslim community it was eye-opening it was I would say transformative and very very educational, although I was teaching at a Christian, uh, an Adventist university. Over the years, I've mentioned it on this program, but uh, are you aware of the writings of Stanley Jones? No, I'm not. Mm -hmm. He was a, a missionary of nearly a hundred years ago, Protestant missionary to India. I, I think he was from the US, but I always read it as though he had an English background, but mm -hmm. I believe he came from the US. Uh, a book of his pretty much changed my thinking, if not my life. Mm -hmm. he, he has a book called The Christ of the Indian Road. Mm -hmm. And he went to India the f uh, in several uh, uh, periods. And the first time he went, I think it was eight, nine years or whatever, mm -hmm. 
no success, didn't baptize anybody, mm -hmm. pretty much broke himself on the system that you're, you're talking about, the many gods and the, and the totally non-Western way of thinking on religious matters. And he had a, a sort of a mental breakdown even. And uh, it was the second time around when he was conducting a discussion with, with some Brahmins. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, one of them said to him, he says, I don't want the, the God of your, of your Christian, of your Western culture. Mm -hmm. I don't want your, your Western God. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Jones thought quickly and he described the Jesus like a holy man in India, moving among the common people, right. walking down the mm -hmm. street there, connecting with them. Mm -hmm. And he says, the, the, uh, the Brahmin thought, and he says, I could, I could learn to love the Christ of the Indian road. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm sure... Which, that yes, and it is true. You know, one of the things, of the many things that I learned from my time there, you have to go to places wherever you go with an open mind. You have to, in your engagement, in your discussion, and we had a lot of students, some were former Hindus, Muslims, they were trans transitioning. Um, of course, I taught in the theology department, and it was interesting to sit and listen to how they understood the concept of deity, why they served, who they served, or what they served, yeah. and try to introduce the, the, the God of the Jesus, the God of the, uh, the Indian road. And that in itself was transformative for me and informative. Um, the sad thing about it is, and I, I see elements of it here, looking back, is that we've almost gone down the same road where you have the caste system, the separations of people depending on, socials, on the social strata, mm. and it being used to separate them, okay? Uh, and, and subjugate them. Yeah, because the caste system is more than separation. It's, to, it's yes. to box you in, and you to can't suppress, move outside yes. that. Yeah, that, well, in, uh, in any way, in many ways, in the West we have a, a type of caste system, we call it class, they call it caste. Yeah. And while I was there, um, they taught, I discovered that they taught Christianity as a philosophy and not necessarily as a religion. And I had a problem with that coming from the West, but I had to adjust my understanding and my teaching methods to um, encompass the different viewpoints. And it was always something to be learned from them, even if I didn't totally agree. I argued that it's not a philosophy. This is a way of, this is a way of life. This is equality. This is fair treatment. This is anti-discrimination. And that's what you get. So I, I, I taught that. And I would ask my, some of my students, why did you become a Christian? Mm. And the stories were very, very uh, well, and, well, and I'm informative. Sure, but I'm sure you came up against it uh, in, in, in India, as in many other countries, the, there was a tendency, a recurring tendency of Christian missions to, to offer sort of a better life mm -hmm. here and now. Mm -hmm. And there were tangible positives to becoming a Christian. Mm -hmm. And often people became a Christian for here and now reasons. And, you know, it was called, you're a rice Christian because mm -hmm. you get more rice. Mm -hmm. uh, where it seems to me in India, uh, they were correct. Not mm -hmm. so much that a Christianity was a philosophy, but it's a different philosophical view of the universe. Right. Uh, I don't think uh, the, the cosmology of the Old Testament and, and Jesus represented that in the New Testament, but that cosmology is not the same or easily integrated with the Indian view of, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the religious uh, Hindu view of everything, mm -hmm. you know, reincarnation and, and multiple gods and the battles. Well, it's true we have war in heaven, but still it's just another, right. another reality. Mm -hmm. And some of them, as you move from state to state, was so completely different from what the others yeah. did. And so, you had all these independent states which were almost like separate kingdoms or separate well, governments. Well, as you well know. Pushed, and, pushed, pushed together, forced together. As you well know, India is a continent, but it's, it's not a unit. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, it's true, it's not a continent, but I mean, it's a, it's, it's a continental uh, reality, the, a, a huge landmass there, but it's not one mm -hmm. peoples. No. It became one because... Uh, uh, you know, England ruled that large area. For several hundred years. But, you know, it, yeah. it's, it's a false distinction mm -hmm. uh, in some ways between India and Pakistan and even Afghanistan. And that, these, that is a common sort of culture, but 
huge tribal differences mm -hmm. and even uh, religions. Mm -hmm. But what we did what discover did. while we were there um, with these different divergent belief systems in place, and here we are, a Christian university, Protestant actually, yeah. trying to bridge the gap and the divide. And not only that, you had students from other countries that were there who were more in line with what we teach in the West in terms of religion. But in the state of Kerala, and it's reported and it's understood that one of the disciples, namely Thomas, went to Kerala and introduced Christianity. Yeah. And Kerala, beautiful place, had higher literacy rate, up, upwards of 85%, and that was several years ago. Mm. The standard of living was better, and all those other things. And it was a, it was a demonstration, I think, a really powerful demonstration, economically, socially, or what have you, of what happens when Christianity, rightly applied, can be transformational. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, m moving around and ha having an op open mind uh, as a teacher, because you, you go to teach, but you also have to be taught. The, the, the sad thing about it was when we got there, they, we were not distinctively the, the stereotypical Anglo missionaries. It was a bit, it was a bit of a shock. Well, that might have been it, a help for you. It was very, it was you very beneficial. More of a blank slate. You, yes, and, and so... You find yourself. Yeah, and so we discovered <laughs> that um, from the standpoint of our own experience, you know, having to experience this societal inequity, inequities that we suffered, we were able to engage with the, the community. We always had children at the house every single weekend Muslims, we had Eritreans, we had Somalians, you we had Christians, we had all kinds of, and they came, they, came, they came together for the time that we were there. And we still have, all these years later, remarkable and memorable experiences, and the kids are in touch with us, but You were talking yes. about what happened in Kerala, and, and, and it is worth remembering in the Christian context, uh, Seventh-day Adventists correctly are, are committed to proclaiming the gospel, and we see an end point Mm -hmm. you know, the gospel to all, all the world. Yes. But it's worth remembering that it went to all the world pretty much in one generation. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thomas, exactly. yeah. and, and then, then we know in the British Isles and so on. Mm -hmm. So I, the, the end of all things is not dependent upon some checklist of countries that we take in Christianity to. Right. It was taken very quickly mm -hmm. and it did make a difference in some countries. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're talking about uh, spiritual change. Uh, again, with Stanley Jones, I'm reminded of Another one of his books, uh, he tells of spending time with Gandhi at his ashram, mm -hmm. and they discuss spiritual matters, and, and, and Gandhi famously, many people know the quote, he said, you know, Christianity was fine, but he didn't like Christians. Mm -hmm. You know, they weren't exemplifying the principle. But when they spoke about finding God, which is mm -hmm. a spiritual quest everywhere, whether you're Christian, mm -hmm. Muslim, mm -hmm. Hindu, or whatever, people are trying to find God. Mm -hmm. uh, and Gandhi says, well, yes, you can find God. But he says, no, it, it may take ages and no miracles are to be expected. Mm -hmm. And Jones oh, but, said, mm -hmm. said that he went back to his room that night, got down and prayed fervently. And he says, uh, I don't know about what he says, but he says, all I know is I need to find God and I need a miracle in my life. It's interesting as you mentioned Gandhi, because Gandhi also said, when it comes to the way that religion was taught through missionaries and intentionally or unintentionally one doesn't know yeah. but he said i like your jesus it's the application of your religion that i well, don't it's like it's a variation of the same quote you didn't right like the same christians yeah. were not exemplifying christ exactly and um we did see some of that you know um in terms of how they perceived us coming from the west you know the, 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 they considered their their civilizations being a lot longer developed and been around a whole lot longer. And so there was a little, some, sus some suspicion you know, that, even, that, even- That judge is always uh, easily given. I don't think we should be as scared of it as, as, as we sometimes are, but there shouldn't be a total dislocation between mm -hmm. the God you present and the, and the faith that you live. Mm -hmm. But of course, none of us can be Christ on earth. Uh, we'll take a short break. Uh, and we'll come back to talk uh, a little more of India and other uh, religious viewpoints and, 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 and how we can function in a global world 
with religious diversity. Welcome back to the Liberty Insider. Before the break, uh, we were in India and getting very philosophical and uh, otherworldly with, with, and India is an interesting country. It's moving at the speed of light mm -hmm. into the 21st century. Uh, last time I was there, I stopped off, now I forget the name of the town, but they have their own Silicon Valley in the hill yeah, the country. It's, right. uh, it's, it's much more it's technological. Probably, it's prob probably in um, Bombay or Pune. Uh, it was in, just, the, in the hill country, but anyhow, yes. in the middle. Mm -hmm. uh, but the point is, India is moving toward te technological advancements very quickly. They make their own cars, and, right. and uh, I think to remember that, that they're, they're moving towards space vehicles and all the rest. Mm -hmm. uh, they have the atomic bomb, so they're not to be dismissed. They're, they're modernizing, but it still remains a massively uh, populous country with huge challenges to. Mm -hmm. Uh, feed and to uh, occupy their mm -hmm. citizenry. But on the religious level, it, it, mm -hmm. to me it's an enduring uh, challenge mm -hmm. how to untangle the, the, all, all of the religious identities and, 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 and connect from a Western Christian point of view. Mm -hmm. And so you were privileged, I think, to be right. uh, and there for we, a while. We, well, while we were there, um, our house was open to the students from other campuses who had friends on the campus at Spicer. Mm. And we saw over a period of time, again, the, 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 how powerful the gospel really was mm. by watching these kids from all different places in the same place, eating the same food, mm. doing, talking about things that they would normally not talk about. In fact, we had young people in our homes, for example, at the time, Eritrea and Somalia were at war. Mm. And you had these kids sitting down in our house, right? There were things we couldn't do in the classroom that we could do at home and forming relationships and getting a better understanding. And also from the standpoint of having been born in England and lived in the United States and then going to India mm. shaped how that journey developed. Did you have m many dealings with the Sikhs? with Sikhism in, in Not really, because where we were down in the southern part of India, yes, the southeastern... I mean, there's an element of Sikhism all over India, but it originates in the uh, Ka northwest. Right, Ka in Kashmir, for example. Yes. Well, Kashmir... Not, 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 right. not as such. That, my, our connection with the Sikh community would have happened in the United Kingdom. Yeah. Right, with the conf con confluence... Now, I'm bringing it up for a reason, because yes. from post-9-11 post in the U.S. in particular, mm -hmm. there's been a great uh, uh, confusion in many people's minds between Sikhism and Islam, mm -hmm. and they're not even close. No, they're not. Well, I shouldn't say they're not close. There's an element of influence, mm -hmm. but they're extremely distinct. They are. And, and uh, uh, Sikhism... Uh, uh, doesn't have any uh, correspondence to actions of the Islamic community. Mm -mm. Uh, but what, what do you know about Sikhs? I, I get, what do they're, I know? They're a warrior. Uh, yeah, they uh, are a warrior. Uh, offshoot war mm -hmm. that, that has elements of Islam in their history. Mm -hmm. and, and, and of course, trying to combine this with uh, Hinduism. Mm -hmm. But they, they, they're more tied up to one God, as I that's where I That's where I want to respond to. They believe in a monotheistic yeah. God. They're, they're very, very structured. It's, it's an amazing religion to observe. And they have connect, probably more connections to what we believe in terms of how their communities are developed. Like I was saying, we experienced them in England and well, we never got to spend time with them. There were no Sikhs coming down to South India, to Spicer in particular. Hmm. I recall an experience, if I can just flip from India to here. Of the week after 9-11, it was a Thursday, I had to go and speak at a church in Tennessee. I was a little afraid of jumping on a plane. This was the Thursday, not the, the week, 10 days after. Oh, I remember for several months after, you know, right. quite knew what was gonna happen. And so, <clears throat> travel is an education. So we're on the plane and then a f Sikh family the brother had his turban on and they had a little boy, probably around seven or eight years old. They come onto the, they get onto the plane and they were sitting adjacent to where we, to where I was. Mm -hmm. And I remember the little boy 
kind of looking around and when he sat down, he said to his father and mother, why are people looking at us like this? And uh, his father said, well, it may be because they don't know us, but he was not old enough to understand the implications yeah. and the innuendos and how people were feeling about this group of people who very few people may, on that plane may have known as being different to the ones who actually carried out the bombing. And I, and I sat down and I thought to myself, this, is, this young boy is experiencing something that he, the, his father could not explain, he didn't want to at that particular time, but I could sense the disconnect sure and how... I'm sure it was for them. It was. And, and, to, and to be fully, uh, really fair, I'm sure it, w it was traumatic for, for many uh, Muslims in the United States who right. not personally were any way involved, mm -hmm. and many of them, most of them hopefully, not even sympathetic to what was done in the name or involving their religion. Mm. Uh, there's more logic to why they might come under a frown, but mm. for someone that's not even of that religion, uh, absolutely to be seen as a, as was, a threat, that very, must have been traumatizing. It was traumatizing, and I felt the trauma, you know, yeah. watching that play out. And, um, and I was thankful to God, again, on the pilgrimage journey, that I had an opportunity to be able to engage them in two different contexts, yeah. but still could feel as, you know, the, the, the general mood of people from, who look different and come up from other different places yeah. can be aligned or misaligned with things that they have no connection to. Yeah. And, 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 and Religion is a very interesting dynamic. It is. And, and the Sikhs, uh, uh, as a community, an admirable community, and, and most people don't know their, their, their religion. Uh, they're not violent mm -hmm. as a community, but it is interesting that they celebrate, uh, uh, if not a violence, then a warlike thing. That, yes, they've got that, that the, ceremonial sword that they, they, they wear. Is it the kirpan or something? Yeah. The, the mm -hmm. uh, ceremonial sword, and, and uh, as India found out, uh, it, 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 there was that rebellion. I don't think it was in Kashmir per se, but at the center of, of, of the Sikh community around uh, Amritsar, mm -hmm. there was a, a civil war for a while in India. And, and then the prime minister of India, Mrs. Gandhi, was killed by one of her Sikh guards. Right, of course, yes. So uh, my point is that it's not just Islam that has jihad and, 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 a, and an element that can turn into violence. Right. Sikhism has it too. Christianity's had it with the Crusades and so on, and, mm -hmm. and from one religion to another, it can, the connection can be more direct, uh, or it may just be as simple as the other, and, and antag antagonism is built up. Mm -hmm. But religion can turn uh, oh, yes. antisocial and, and violent, unfortunately, quite quickly. And uh, if I can kind of I might migrate from India back here to the United States. Your where, pilgrimage is getting longer and longer. Your pilgrimage is moving on. Yes, it is. <laughs> you, um, you'll, be, it, you'll, you'll get your frequent flyer bonus. <laughs> yeah, here, here, here's the other thing too, and going back to what I love about this particular ministry in terms of yeah. um, engagement and things like that. I remember transitioning from a Sunday keeping church to become a Seventh Day Adventist. Yeah. And that was a culture shock in and of itself because of what and, we were And Seventh-day Adventist worship, uh, the day that was given in the Old Testament at first, mm -hmm. the seventh day Sabbath, right. memorializing creation right, on Saturday. Right, right. But I do remember coming in and um, trying to understand this thing about the Sabbath and, and uh, you know, and all the other things, and LNG, white and... The, the it was a, a prophetic, uh, a woman with a prophetic gift that, that helped mm -hmm. found the mm -hmm. uh, Seventh Heaven Church. And I, and, and I knew that later, but I did not accept her straight away. Yeah. But I could not help feeling, even among our community, the Seventh Day Adventist community, just coming in, feeling as though I was not totally accepted because, you know, those first day people these terminologies, these re frame of references were not complimentary, but among us even, even today, you know, how we view other people who may go, to, oh, you've got the mark of the beast because you're on, you worship yeah. on Sunday, all yeah, those kinds we, of things. We definitely need to, to use religion as, as in a pejorative way against anyone else. Yes. 
uh, it's fine. You and I believe that we have uh, correct theology and we found the truth, but we need to look at others in a charitable way and, and grant them mm -hmm. that same right, right? Yes, I totally agree with that. So here we are. Again, my journey has taken so many twists and turns in the last 30 some years, but I'm glad for the journey and it's been of benefit to me and I, I thank God for the experience. I remember one day visiting Myanmar and walking through the capital of Nangun, I think as they call it now, and coming upon a, a, an incredible monument uh, with all of the deities. I think they were Hindu deities, it wasn't Buddhist, but all of the deities intertwined and scrambling over each other in a, in a, in a great mix of, uh, of divine personages, if you like. And I had great trouble applying myself to that. But this has been the human problem from the beginning. Back in the Old Testament, Moses, there on the mountain, said to God, show me your face. And who can look upon the face of God? But Moses was shown and explicated by God himself, his character. And I like to think that with religious liberty, we can look into the character of God and apply it to our fellows, rediscover what it is to be creatures of the God of the universe. For Liberty Insider, this is Lincoln Steed. <laughs>